Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you're watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today we're going to be talking about all of the best stuff Netflix is adding in January 2022. So I don't know about you, but 2021 went by very fast. It was a very full year, a lot of stuff going on, but it went by very fast. 2022 is already here, and because it's the end of the year and start of a new one, a lot of licenses with Netflix end and begin, which means they're adding a ton of new stuff right on January 1st. So the lineup for this particular video is gonna be my top 10 picks out of everything they're adding on the first. Those are gonna be familiar movies you've either seen or heard of. We'll be going through my top 10 in no particular order. Then I'm gonna give you a montage of all the rest of the stuff they're adding on the first. And then we're gonna go through the rest of the month talking about my top picks out of all the new stuff they're gonna be adding throughout the month of January. And then I'll wrap up this video with the full list of everything leaving during the month of January. That way you can be sure to watch some of those titles before they're gone. But before that, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Now, I already said 2021 was a very full year. There was a lot of stuff going on in Flip Connection Studios, but one of them was fitness. A little over a year ago, I decided to get in some of the best shape of my life for a couple of reasons. One of them being COVID-19, I just wanna be as resilient as possible. And it's been going great. I've lost body fat and put on muscle and I've done a variety of things, but one of them that I've started recently is Athletic Greens. I find it's easy for me to get plenty of protein throughout the day to go with my workouts, but not necessarily all the nutrients that I want from a green diet. Athletic Greens is absolutely packed with vitamins and minerals, probiotics, antioxidants, and digestive enzymes to help improve your nutrient absorption from other things that you eat. So it's real great for overall comprehensive health, and it's incredibly convenient when you compare it to actually juicing stuff yourself. Trust me again, I used to do that, and I don't do it anymore for a reason. And right Right now, when you use the link in the description, my viewers are gonna get a free gift. They're actually gonna give you, believe it or not, this little bottle is a year's supply of D3K2, which means it's a year's supply of vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, which is great for your overall health and your immune system, which I don't know why you wouldn't wanna have a stronger immune system right now. That free gift is also gonna include five travel packs of the AG1 powder. But when you place an order, you get all of this. You get a canister, a scoop, the pouch full of athletic greens, the free gift, the canister to drink it out of. So if you want to take some ownership of your health, this is an easy way to do it. Just visit that link in the description to get the free gift again for my viewers. But let's go ahead and move on with my top 10 picks out of all the familiar favorites Netflix is going to be adding again on January 1st. While these are my top 10, they're in no particular order, and I'm gonna start with one of the newer releases they're adding on January 1st, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Now this is a horror anthology series that only came out a few years ago. This is based on a book by the same name, and there was a lot of hype around it. I think readers of the book were maybe slightly disappointed, but that's kind of par for the course that always happens. While some people were expecting this to sort of change the face of horror, it didn't really do that, but when you compare this one to a lot of the horror anthology movies that have come out over the last 10 years or so, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark does stand out. Happy Feet actually makes my top 10 for a couple of reasons. One is my kids love it and it's a lot of fun to watch with them. While there is a little bit too much singing and dancing in it for my taste, this is actually directed by George Miller who is most famous for having directed the Mad Max series in its entirety. Now, the thing I find really interesting is if you look at the cinematography in Happy Feet and Fury Road, the color palettes are very different, but there is a lot of similarities, and Happy Feet is a beautiful and stunning movie, even though it does have some years on it. Big Fish is one of, if not my favorite Tim Burton movie to have been released this century. I think he was really at his peak in the 90s with some of his best work, and I've honestly not enjoyed most of his movies that have come out post 2000, making Big Fish kind of far and away my favorite thing he's done in a long time. 
It's got so many great fantasy elements and characters in this big epic story that goes in directions unlike anything else. It's really unusual, yet it's tight, packed together, and it, it manages to work despite how bizarre and strange it is. One of the more heartwarming things Netflix is adding this month as well, making it a really good watch even if you've seen it more than once. Another fantastic fantasy movie they're gonna be adding is Hook. This makes my top 10 because my son is finally old enough to watch this one. I worried about some of the hook elements being a little bit too frightening for him. The children are screaming. The children are screaming. But he likes really creepy stuff and I think he's old enough now to enjoy this Steven Spielberg iteration of Peter Pan. I find it to be a really magical movie for multiple reasons. It's got some really classic stuff like Rufio in it, but also just a really amazing performance from Robin Williams and a really fantastic production design as well. It's a stunning movie even to this day. If it's been a while since you've seen it and you grew up on this movie the way I did, this could make for a great watch for you to watch with your kids. Another great one for the kids is Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, the 1971 version. Even though they are adding Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, the Tim Burton post-2000 remake that I'm honestly not a big fan of because the original is so good, I don't think the Tim Burton version comes even close to it. Even though this is a much older movie, I think it can still capture the imagination and, more importantly, the attention of young children today for a whole host of reasons, but mainly because of Gene Wilder's performance. I am a big fan of his, bigger than most, and I still, even though he's done a ton of great stuff, I think his portrayal of Willy Wonka is the best performance maybe he ever gave. So this is a movie I like to revisit fairly often, especially now having kids. This is one I really enjoy watching with them as well. Now for some stuff to not watch with the kids, they're gonna be adding 300. This is probably my favorite Zack Snyder movie. I know I don't always have nice things to say about his movies. While I do often enjoy them enough, I find 300 to be one of his most successful in terms of storytelling, and I think that's because it followed Frank Miller's graphic novel so closely. The cinematography looks like Frank Miller's work, the story is very, very faithful, almost to a T. And as a result, Zack Snyder didn't lose the story in all of the fun visuals. Now, I know this movie has been parodied quite a bit, so some of the effects seem a little silly today, but I can tell you, as someone who watched this in the theater back when it was released, this was some badass shit back in the day. Longtime subscribers know I'm a sucker for heist movies. I like good ones, mediocre ones, and bad ones, but one of the best to have been released in the last 20 years or so is The Town. The Town is based on a novel called Prince of Thieves by Chuck Hogan, but what I really like about this movie is its depiction of Boston. While I don't have a ton of experience spending time in Boston, I felt like everything was very authentic. I love that there's a heist at Fenway Park. The car chases and things aren't hyped up. They're not big Hollywood. Everything feels very real and grounded. And you feel like this is probably what it's like to go on a heist with career criminals like these guys. So top notch stuff there, a really rewatchable heist movie in my opinion, but believe it or not, it's not the last one in my top 10 here. They're also gonna be adding Taxi Driver. At one point, this is one of my favorite movies, but it is a hard movie to watch and kind of an even harder movie to recommend for mass audiences. However, if you consider yourself to be a movie buff whatsoever, even just a budding or aspiring one, Taxi Driver, I promise you, is required viewing. And since Once Upon a Time, this was one of my favorite movies, I've got a ton of fun facts about it. I'll tell you one in this video. The ending sequence, the shootout at the end, you will notice the quality suddenly drops. It's desaturated, it's grainy, it doesn't look good. This is not necessarily a stylistic choice. This was a requirement in order to give this an R rating back in the 70s when it was released. The end sequence was just too bloody and their solution was to desaturate it. And the original footage has long since been destroyed or deteriorated, so it is forever lost. The brilliant colors of all the blood in the end of this movie will never be seen again. I don't know, unless like Peter Jackson gets his hands on it and remasters it or something. They're also adding Braveheart. It's hard to not include this on the list. It's one of the most loved movies of its kind of all time, and for good reason. It does have some slow pacing compared to things released today, but that's less of a flaw with Braveheart and more of a flaw with sort of how they make movies today. But 
absolutely great stuff. Really fantastic historical stuff in here as well, even though it's not all accurate. It's a really great depiction, especially if you're a younger viewer of mine and you've maybe never seen Braveheart. Do yourself a favor and watch it on Netflix this month. And I know I said no particular order, but I did save my favorite for last, Hell or High Water. I recommended this a ton when it was on Netflix a few years ago. It has been gone for over a year. It's coming back. One of my favorite heist movies to come out in recent years. In this movie, Chris Pine and Ben Foster, easily one of my favorite actors, play brothers who are knocking off banks, small banks, in Texas. So while there are heist elements, it's very different. This is smash and grab, getting what's in the register, but you get this amazing performance from Jeff Bridges, who's this lawman trying to track these brothers down. There's all sorts of great stuff in this movie. Little light comedic touches here and there, reminiscent of the Coen Brothers at times. While this movie doesn't quite feel like a Coen Brothers movie, it has a lot in common with movies like No Country for Old Men and Fargo. If you're fans of crime movies like those, I cannot recommend Hell or High Water enough. Now, like I said, we're talking about January 1st, first of the year. Netflix is adding a ton of new stuff because a bunch of new licenses are beginning at the beginning of the year, just as other ones are ending. So here's a quick montage of the rest of the stuff that's gonna be added, again, January 1st. Then we're gonna go through all the new stuff they're gonna be adding through the month. Okay, so jumping ahead to January 6th, they're gonna be adding a movie that either is gonna go by the title The Wasteland or The Beast. It has two titles right now. I'm sure they'll settle on one. Right now it looks like it might be The Beast. This is a Spanish language movie about a family living out in this isolated area. It looks kinda like a post-apocalyptic movie and there's some sort of creature out lurking in the darkness. Now. From what I've seen, this does look a little bit more like an art film. It looks like it's gonna be quite good, but don't expect a midnight monster movie with this one, despite its description. Johnny Test season two gets added. While this isn't a favorite of mine, it is a favorite of my Van Damme kids, so I'm sure it'll get plenty of play in the Van Damme household. Then on the 11th, they're adding another one that currently has two titles. It's either The Colony or Tides. Now this one is English language and it's a unusual post-apocalyptic movie. This is about people who left Earth because of a apocalyptic event and they return to find tribes of people seemingly at war with each other. This one looks like it's got some incredible cinematography in it and it currently doesn't have a lot of reviews, but it currently has some good ones. So this is one of the more interesting titles coming to Netflix for me this month. January 14th brings a couple of new series, including Archive 81. 
Now, this is loosely based on a podcast series by the same name, and it is a sort of a mystery horror type series. This is about a young guy who works on repairing some damaged videos and then gets sucked into this investigation. There seems to be some paranormal elements or at least some heavy, heavy gothic mystery elements. So while I'm not familiar with the podcast, this one definitely has my attention. And then what looks like maybe another creepy series, The House. This is stop motion and looks a lot like Wes Anderson's stop motion movies. I'm excited to see how good this looks. It looks very bizarre and a little bit dark and twisted, but not too much. It definitely looks like one of the more interesting things getting added this month. And as much as I love movie magic, I am a total sucker for stop motion animation for some unknown reason. On the 16th, they're adding Paul Thomas Anderson's The Phantom Thread. This was his latest movie for a while, but Licorice Pizza just got released at Christmas in what seems to be maybe 10 theaters in the country. It's kind of a hard movie to go see in the theaters right now, but if you wanna check out some Paul Thomas Anderson magic, check out The Phantom Thread. He's one of my favorite directors for a reason, and Netflix does a good job of always keeping at least one of his movies on the platform. The 21st brings Munich, The Edge of War. This is a World War II espionage flick that I cannot wait to watch. I love historical dramas like this and the fact that this has a spy element to it that looks very grounded and real, does not look Hollywood at all. Very interested in this movie. It will likely be mixed language. It looks like the type of thing where people are kind of speaking their native tongue for the most part, but it does look like an excellent spy thriller, even if it is maybe a little bit dry because it's trying to be so true to life. And then the 21st also adds kind of the crown jewel of the month, the thing everyone's wanting to watch, Ozark, season four, part one. They couldn't help themselves. They've got to split up the final season. It's a popular thing to do to try to squeeze every last little bit of juice out of it. But season four is here. I can't wait to watch it. I know a lot of you can't as well. There's not much to say. If you've been watching it, I know you're excited for season four. And if you haven't, you don't have much time to try to catch up, but it is one of the best crime shows to have come out since Breaking Bad. January 28th adds Home Team, another really interesting project for me in this movie. Kevin James is actually gonna be playing the coach of the New Orleans Saints, Sean Payton. Now, as someone who grew up 45 minutes outside of New Orleans, I cannot wait to watch this. I'm very curious if it's gonna be kind of a screwball family movie or if it's gonna have interesting insights into Bounty Gate. If you're not familiar with the story, Sean Payton was not able to coach the Saints for an entire season. And during that time, he coached kids. This is the story of that. It does kind of look like the Little Giants or something, but hopefully there's some insight into the situation as well. At the very least, whether it's good or not, I'm interested in this one a lot, actually. They're also adding a comedy series called The Girl in the House Across the Street from The Girl in the Window. Kristen Bell stars in this one. It's kind of a spoof on movies like The Woman in the Window. It's a whole subgenre, and this show looks like it's poking some fun at it. Could be really funny stuff. It could also be only for people who generally like those movies, but those are all my picks out of everything getting added to Netflix. Here is everything leaving Netflix during the month of January. Now, if you are new to this channel, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video, but these dates are the dates that they are gone, which means you won't be able to watch it on that date. So on your calendar, make sure you watch them prior to the date listed. I have highlighted in bold all the titles that I recommend. These are things that have been featured in other videos. By the way, if you are new here, I do videos like this every single week so you never run out of good movies and shows to watch. So if you like this video, click the like button and maybe even click that subscribe button. If you really liked it and want to support the channel, maybe you want to become a Patreon supporter and see your name here at the end of every video. There's links to that in the video description below, along with links to get your Athletic Greens today's sponsor. Again, all of that in the video description below and if you're looking for a full list of all the movies I've talked about in this video, it is in the top pinned comment down below. YouTube's automatic censorship does not really like when I put movie titles in the video description, so that's why they're in the top pinned comment. Just take a screen grab with your phone and you've got the full list to go with you the rest of the month. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode and you will see me on the next one.